Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Live Healthy Now. I'm joined today by Ashley Hollick, who is a coach, survivor and speaker, helping to inspire and support women who are stuck living in fear and anxiety because of trauma from toxic relationships. And Ashley has a great story to share about how the physical pain she experienced for many years was caused from the trauma she'd experienced when she was very young in a toxic relationship. So today we're going to be sharing lots of tips and support to help you if this is something that you're struggling with and really dive into how trauma can show up in both mental and physical ways in your body. So welcome today, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. So I'd really like to kick off today by asking you what your most impactful healthy habit is. I would have to say when I started getting up before my kids um, and not being woken up by them, it's completely different when you wake up on your own and spend 30 minutes to an hour doing things just for yourself. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. So what's the one thing you really enjoy doing when you have that quiet time first thing on the morning? Yes. Well, the hot coffee is very nice. (laughs) And then I usually do my gratitude practice. So I write down five things that I'm grateful for that have happened in the past 24 hours. And then I'll write 10 affirmations or goals that I'm working towards. And that's just something that I do every morning to start the day on a positive note, thinking about the future and all the things that I want to bring in. Oh, that's amazing. And that's incredible that you've got very young children as well. And you're able to get up in the morning and do that and you can feel the impact of that. And what has been like the biggest change to your health by implementing that morning routine? I think it just helped my mental health overall. Um, I'm a very busy mom. And when I started this, you know, I was still working at a job and doing all of these things. So to start the day taking care of myself, filling my cup up first, it helps me to be a better mom and a better wife and just to enjoy my life more because I am taking care of myself. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. All about that. All about making sure we're putting our self-care first. So I'd love to start by asking you to share a little bit about your story. You know, what is it that's led you to where you are today so that we can help someone listening to understand what we mean when we talk about trauma and toxic relationships? Yes. So my, you know, long story short is that two years ago in November of 2020, I healed 12 years of chronic debilitating back pain that I had, and it was with mindset work. And I realized and I learned that this physical pain that I was experiencing was all actually emotional trauma from an abusive relationship Mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. Yeah. And how did that back pain impact your life? Obviously, that's a long time to be experiencing chronic pain like that. Yes. So it wasn't like a tiny backache or like a cute, oh, my back hurts. It was pretty excruciating pain. It started when I was 21. I threw my back out twice. And uh, when I threw my back out, I could barely walk for about three to four days. And obviously, I went to the doctor because I was 21 years old and that's pretty scary. (laughs) And I wasn't doing anything crazy. I didn't get in a car accident or pick up something super heavy. Um, I sneezed and then I coughed. And those were the two times I threw my back out. And uh, it just kind of continued. And I threw my back out eight times in the first five years. I I threw my back out once when I got my, my son. He was about 15 months out of the bathtub. I picked him up and by that time I was, you know, a seasoned vet. I knew all about it. So I knew once I got that twinge that my back was about to start spasming and I would be in excruciating pain. And so I had to carry my slippery, wet baby 10 feet to the bed, drop him on the bed and then call my husband and tell him to get home as soon as possible before the pain kicked in. And it was bad. When my husband met me, we met eight years ago, he knew, don't talk to me in the morning. Do not talk to me in the morning until I've had my coffee, until I had some integration time to kind of get used to the pain that I woke up in because I'd wake up 
and it felt like somebody was ripping the muscles off of my low spine. Like the pain was intense. I couldn't jump. I couldn't jump off the ground with both feet. I would do workouts, but my workouts would have to be very controlled, never doing like any sort of jumping move, no burpees, um, even squats were a little bit tricky. And I always had to make sure that if I started to feel any sort of inkling to completely back off of the exercise. And so that was a lot. It was really hard. I would tell my my son, I'd be like, oh, we can't do that today. Not today. My back hurts. Not today. Mommy's back hurts. Wow. God. Yeah. That's just such a debilitating thing to experience. And it's not just the physical pain, is it? It's the mental impact that chronic pain like that has. So just to kind of rewind a little bit, obviously you had a toxic relationship when you were very young and you were carrying trauma with you. Were you also still at this point, you know, 12 years down the line when you, you realize where the back pain was coming from were you still working through the mental impact of the trauma that you were carrying yeah so i got out when i was about 20 it we were still talking when i was about 21 ish um it was kind of a very blurred ending and i had severe ptsd after you know uh, if someone raised a hand near me i flinched i was always putting my hands up like in a defensive stance and if people yelled like you know we'd be at a party if people started screaming even if they were happy screams you know just like woohoos um i would cower like on the ground and try to get people to be quiet and calm because i was it, you know it was triggering me and it, there was a lot of other triggers and I started to heal them and my PTSD wasn't so bad. I, I started to feel happiness and I was eliminating um, the things that made me unhappy. I stopped watching the news and I was really working on myself. And, you know, at one point I just kind of thought, okay, well, this is this is as good as it gets, right? I'm I'm as healed as I'll ever get. I'm just sort of damaged, right? I'm damaged goods. And I didn't really think that I could improve anymore, right? And so 12 years later, I didn't think that there was really anything that I could do. I didn't realize that I could keep healing. And, you know, I felt great. I felt like I was thriving. I had met my husband. He was an amazing man. We have two great kids. Uh, we bought our first home out of a different state and everything was going so great. I was absolutely thriving, but I still had this chronic pain, right? And I'm like, yeah. something is not quite right. And um, I wasn't actively working on the healing of it um, because I just didn't think that it was something that was necessary. And then I heard that emotional trauma could be stored as physical pain. And I, at that point, I... I was ready to try anything because nothing, nothing was helping. Heat and ice weren't working. Stretching wasn't working. I was like, maybe this could possibly be it. Right. And, um, and so then I, that's what I tried. I tried doing that and I did all of this deep healing. And I realized that I was still very angry. I still had a lot of hate and negative emotions toward my abuser. Right. 12 years later, I've still, mad at him about it. And I realized that I was still holding on to it a lot, still kind of thinking of the trauma. Certain things would come up in my life and I'd be like, this is because of what you did, right? So I had all these feelings, all these negative feelings, the shame and blame and all of this stuff that I was still carrying. And I realized that that was kind of why I was still stuck in the trauma 12 years later. Yeah. So what did that work look like when you talk about that healing works? It sounds as though a lot of the process you went through was mindset type work. So how did you, you know, in a nutshell, really, once you'd established that the physical pain was probably linked to this emotional trauma you were still carrying deep inside, what did that look like? I, what did you do first and, and how did that proceed from that point? Yeah, so kind of at the same time where I heard that emotional trauma could be stored as physical pain and I thought, maybe, maybe this is possible after I thought it was crazy first, right? Uh, I ended up in a manifestation course. I enrolled in this 
online manifestation course, do it at your own pace. And thought it would be really fun, <laughs> you know, that I was going to be doing all this cool stuff. And it ended up being this deep healing container that I didn't know I needed. Um, I did inner child work. I did these deep meditations. And before this, I hadn't really meditated much, maybe like a few minutes here or there. It was still something that was really hard for me to do because my mind is so active. I'm always thinking. I'm always filling my day with activities and things like that. And so I was doing these 20, 30 minute meditations where I'm feeling my whole body vibrating. I'm sobbing hysterically. I'm going through all of these emotions and releasing. I did a cord cutting meditation where you cut the energetic bonds between you and the person that you want to sever ties with. And, you know, all these things were so new to me. And um, it was just crazy because I went through the motions kind of unsure of what was happening, kind of in disbelief. And they were so powerful and so moving. And after about five weeks of this, all of this releasing and journaling and bringing up what had happened, you know, and writing angry letters and uh, releasing and crying, I woke up and my back pain was gone. Wow. That's just incredible. And has that continued? Like, have you had to keep working on it? Are the practices that you have to do now to keep the back pain at bay? Or was it a case of that's it, you healed, you fixed? Yes. So it, it stayed away for a while. Um, I didn't tell anyone at first because I thought I, I thought I was going to come back. I thought maybe I was having a good day and then a good week and maybe a good month. Right. And it stayed away. And there was a couple of times where I started to get a little bit of like a twingy of pain. Right. And every time it was something mental that I, that was happening. One of the times I unblocked my ex. And the reason that I did that, because he's been blocked on social media since for about 12 years. Right. And I unblocked him thinking, Hey, I've gone through this process of forgiveness with him. That was like an internal thing. It had nothing to do with him. I didn't tell him I forgave him. And I unblocked him with the mindset of maybe he wants to reach out and tell me how sorry he is and that he knows the error of his ways and all this stuff, right? And that's when my pain started to come back. And the crazy thing is, is that he actually contacted me um, in those like few months that I had him unblocked. He sent me a Facebook message and it was to tell me that one of our friends, because we went to high school together, one of our friends from high school had passed. And it was really hard to hear that one of my friends had passed. And it was even harder to hear it from him. And yeah. I didn't respond to this message because I didn't feel that there was anything that I needed to say. I received mm. the news. And he actually called me on Facebook Messenger twice. And I'm in my, my kid's room, sitting on their bed, playing with my kids. And in comes this call. And it felt like such an intrusion because I have this, this new life. I live in a new place. I finally live in a different city from him. And here he is inside of my house. And mm. I was like, this is not, this is not what I want. You don't have a place in my life or near my family. And so I just blocked him again. And then the pain went away. Yeah. So it's definitely something that needs to be kept up. I like to think of healing as just another healthy habit, right? It's not like, oh, you went to the gym every day for a month. You don't have to go ever again. Or, yeah. oh, you drink a bunch of water today. Don't drink any next week. You'll be good. It's just another healthy habit. It's a lifelong journey and there's no shame around that. I know people don't feel, aren't like, well, you're going to go to the gym again. You know, like we don't shame people for doing other healthy habits, but for some reason, there's kind of this perspective, that like what you're still not over it. You're still doing healing work. Right. And so I think it's yeah. important to just shift that perspective. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that 100% because I think in so many different aspects, when people think about B 
being healthy or changing something in their life to feel better. They do think of it as being a once and done type approach. You know, it's like, oh, I just have to go on a diet and then take a few, that's finished, I can go back to normal life or like you say I can go to the gym and get fit and then oh I won't need to do it anymore and I'm very much the same as you about helping to share that message that this is for life and it should be something Mm -hmm. that fits into your life and you're right I think not just in this particular situation of having trauma from a toxic relationship but many people carry lots of different traumas and challenges because of things that have happened in their past whether that's you know something with somebody else or just something in how they are as as their own person and it is often something that needs continuous work but that work does get easier is that how you found it that it's become easier to manage it compared to how it was at the beginning yeah i just think of it as you're adding tools to your tool belt because when it comes to healing, there are so many different ways that you can heal. I know for the longest time that I thought the only way to heal after something like this was to go to talk therapy. And I had a very bad experience with a psychiatrist when I was 19 who gave me a bunch of pills and I was already um, very mentally unstable at that time. And Uh, you know, he did this after meeting me for one hour. And so I never wanted to go back to a doctor again because I felt um, that they didn't have my best interests at heart, right? And so I thought that that was the only way to heal was to go to talk therapy. And actually talk therapy isn't the best for this type of trauma because talking about it just keeps you stuck in that trauma. Your brain thinks you're experiencing the trauma at the time. There's lots of other different things that you can do, uh, somatic work and physical ways that you can move the trauma out of your body. You can also meditate or do tapping. And there's so many different things. And I did all of these at home on my own by watching a few videos. So it's accessible. And so I just think of it as, trying new tools. It's not a one size fits all. Some will work for you. Some might. And just keep adding and doing it as you need and not doing it. You don't have to do five hours a day, right? You can do five minutes here, 20 minutes there. It's very um, unstructured, right? You just do what feels good for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's a brilliant way of explaining it. And like you say, to make it accessible and real, because most people, you know, don't have a lot of time. That's why so many of us struggle to build a healthy lifestyle. We feel like we're caught in this spin cycle and there's never enough time. So just to kind of take a little bit of a step back, I do want to come back onto the habits and the kinds of things that are making an impact with the people you work with. But when we talk about trauma, how does trauma affect your health? Obviously in your situation, you had the chronic back pain, which was very physical and very much a big part of your life for a long time. But in what other ways might someone out there not realize that what they're struggling with to feel well and strong and happy, can people actually, you know, be struggling with something from a past trauma? Yes. So trauma changes your brain. So it it actually will change your brain and that affects a lot of things that you do. Um, You can have unhealed trauma by, you can have difficulties setting boundaries or maybe you're a people pleaser because you don't want to make waves. That can just be signs of unhealed trauma. Maybe you always say yes, even when you want to say no. Um, It can show up physically as chronic pain or migraines or GI issues. I know I went to the emergency room three times because I had such severe stomach pain that I thought my appendix had burst. It was so excruciating. And I'm sure that was just the trauma. And um, it's, I like to think of trauma as a weed. It is growing underneath the surface And you might think that everything is okay, but really it's affecting every area of your life. It can affect your relationships. I know in the beginning of my relationship, I had a really hard time having any sort of disagreement with my husband. I would immediately shut off. I couldn't handle it. My brain would probably shut off parts of my brain because it was too overwhelming for me. And I would 
run away from my husband and he was just trying to have a conversation with me. And so this was just another way that the trauma was affecting me. And I, I didn't think it was because I thought I'm healed. Right. Mm. So yeah, there's just wow. so many different ways. And if you're not, if you don't take care of it, it's going to continue to show up in all of these different ways. Chronic anxiety is another big thing. I had really bad anxiety and I just kind of thought that was how I was built, right? I thought it was just something that was a part of me and I was able to heal that anxiety. So if you're having any sort of mental or physical issues and you've had trauma in your past, and if you're human, you've probably had some sort of trauma in your past, you can do work to heal that trauma and to kind of shift the things that are going on inside of you. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. I love hearing about all of this, I think, because the brain is just so powerful. We don't realize what goes on in there. And yeah, there's so many amazing things that it's responsible for. But likewise, as you say, you know, to carry something like this and we know how fast physical weights grow. So to picture it like that, I think is a really good way to try and wrap your head around what's going on as well. So just a little bit for my benefit, Ashley, because I honestly don't have very much experience of trauma. How would you define a trauma? So trauma could be anything. Uh, they talk about big T's and little T's. And so big T's are things like um, abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. Um, and little T's could be something like uh, you were made fun of when you were growing up. Or maybe you had parents who worked full time and you didn't feel that your needs were met as a child. And so all of these things can cause you trauma and you might not realize it, or maybe you're like, oh, it's, it wasn't that big of a deal, but at you as a child, it was a really big deal. And it created these, these beliefs like, oh, I need to take care of myself because nobody's going to take care of me. And so those are all the different sorts of trauma. Yeah, that, that is really interesting because as you say, every one of us will probably have experienced some kind of trauma. Then maybe for many of us, that's the little small T's and things that we never connect the dots to, to the way that we think, feel and function as an adult. So tell me a little bit about the coaching that you do. How do you work with women who have these traumas from, in your case, you specialize in toxic relationship issues? And, you know, what does that look like working with them to, dig into the trauma and the impact it's having on them and then getting started on building healthy habits to improve the health. Yeah. So right now I am, one of my missions is spreading awareness that it's even possible for emotional trauma to cause physical pain. And so I talk about that a lot. And I also share the different tools and modalities that you can use. I'm, like I said, I did all of these things at home and on my own. So that is a big piece that I share. I try to demystify it and uh, change the perspective that it has to, you have to drive to a doctor's office and you have to be seen by a therapist for an hour and drive in traffic, you know, all these things. And I try to just show that it can be done at home on your own with just some simple guidance. Um, and I create little mini offers so that people can go, okay, well, I would like to try EFT, emotional freedom technique tapping, which is something that I'm recently certified in. And I like to share the tips of how to use these modalities and make it so it's not complicated, right? All of yeah. these things are very simple when you break them down and there are powerful tools that we can use and you don't need to find practitioners to do all of these things for yourself. You can do them on your own. And so I like to share um, those as well. And I'm also creating my own podcast to further spread this mission and all of these modalities. And I will be bringing on guest experts as well, yeah. who I've got someone who specialized in inner child work. And I have people who specialize in childhood abuse and all of these different things mm -hmm. so that we can share how it's possible to heal 
and not only yeah. heal, but to fully thrive after abuse. It is not a life sentence. You are not stuck like that. You are not damaged goods. Like I thought you can heal and you can thrive. Mm, absolutely brilliant. And I love what you're saying there about sharing the message, just raising that awareness, because I think, you know, that's where there's potentially a big problem in that lots of people are suffering and living with the result of trauma without, like I said, joining those dots to know that that's why they're feeling the way they're feeling. So if somebody mm. is thinking, yeah, this is me, this is why I'm feeling the way I am and I'm struggling with certain parts of my health, how could they get started straight away? I like to talk about taking small steps and you've mentioned there's a lot of potential to do things at home and to do it, you know, even for free. What's something that somebody could do to make quite a big impact quickly in a short space of time? Yes. So I think first being aware and also being open to the possibility. Like I mentioned, a lot of the things that I did to heal, if you would have told me three years ago, like, hey, next year you're going to write an angry letter and you're going to rip it up and flush it. And also you're going to do some meditations and your back pain is going to be gone. If you would have told me that, I would have called you crazy and like ran away from you. Right. And so I think just being open to the possibility that maybe it is possible. Right. And uh, I know it's not how we are raised in the United States. We think it's physical pain. There must be something physically wrong. So I think that's an important first step is just kind of opening your mind to the possibility. And then I think the next step is education. Start educating yourself about how trauma actually affects your brain. The Body Keeps the Score is an incredible book and resource. I feel like it's a user manual to myself that has helped me to understand, okay, I read this after I healed. It helped me to understand why I did have the pain. And it explained it with, you know, with science and brain scans and all of these things. Mm. So educating myself about how it actually happened and what really went on in my brain was great. And that also helped me to release any shame or guilt or anger that I felt at myself for how I reacted after, for how I was, for how I healed. And it helped me to love myself after. And I think the third next step is to start managing your triggers. Because once you learn about how your triggers affect you, when you think about the trauma, your brain doesn't realize if it's happening now in the past or if it's something you're thinking about in the future. But it still shuts off half of your brain. It still alerts the amygdala and it still floods your body with stress hormones. And it still keeps you in that activated state. And we know that stress is bad for us, right? We know it causes all of yeah. these health issues. And so it's very important to start managing those triggers. And it's not difficult to do that either. Um, a good first step for that is to start journaling when you are triggered. Start being like, okay, it's because I drove past this spot. And I know that I was triggered because I started to feel my heart race or I started to get sweaty and I started to think about the traumatic event that happened there. And then once you notice what your triggers are, then you can start to um, add in tools uh, a, a really easy one is just breathing, just deep breathing, five seconds in your nose and five seconds out of your mouth. And once I learned this, I was, I'm able to stop myself from going into um, a, a triggered moment where my heart starts racing and I start getting all sweaty and panicky. And I feel like the anxiety rising inside of my body. I'm able to stop it just by doing that deep breathing. And that's just one little tool, right? And yeah. once you can start to manage those triggers, then it becomes a lot easier because your body gets out of that activated state. Yeah. And I've suffered with anxiety for 27 years and breathing has been my life savior there. I've tried lots of different techniques for breathing. And one of the big kind of light bulb moments I had through the years was that when we are in those kind of fight or flight situations, we stop breathing, we hold our breath, you know, we go into this, this kind of full, tight stress, you know, hold everything in. 
But if we breathe, yeah. it just does wonders, doesn't it? And there's lots of different breathing techniques you can try. You know, there's the box one, like the four in, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. Like you say, the five in, five out. Lots of different ways, but it's just, I think, about breathing, isn't it? And really helping yeah. to calm that response mechanism. And so the reason why given, the breathing yeah. is so, is so, um, powerful is because if you can slow down your breathing, you can slow down the rest of those automatic processes. So if you can get your breathing under control, it's going to start to slow your heart rate and all of that. So that's why it's so important to focus on that because you're like breathing. I, I know how to breathe. Right. And it's easy to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You've given so much insight there. Lots of actionable advice and tips, you know, how to start right at the very beginning with just becoming aware and thinking about what's going on and then trying to look at the different solutions you might have available to you, the different advice and inspiration like yourself, you know, for people to look on social media, whether it's YouTube or Googling, but there's so much content out there that can help you to become better informed and to help build more awareness of what's going on with yourself and how you might go away trying to work and, and improve that. And then that's the next part is what actually do you want to try out? What techniques can you test to see if they have a positive impact on how you feel and your health? And then the next step is obviously starting to build those things as habits that fit into your daily routines and lifestyles. So just before um, we kind of wrap everything up, I've got a quick little kind of um, this or that quiz for you, Ashley. Just five things that I'm going to ask you to see which one would be your preferred habit. And I think from what you've said on some of them, I might know the answer. Um, so would you prefer to walk or run? Walk. <laughs> walk. <laughs> water or juice? Uh, water. Yeah. And I think I know this one, a morning or a bedtime routine? Morning routine. Yeah. Bedtime, I'm like pretty time... much like dead for the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just that bedtime routine is going to bed. Exactly. <laughs> what about time on your own or time with others? Ooh, I would have to say time on my own because I'm always with others as a homeschooling mama. <laughs> So right. I'm always surrounded by others and I don't get a lot of time on my own. And when I do, it's magical. <laughs> yeah. And it really helps to boost your well-being. I can imagine. And then the last one, and I'm not sure on this because you've mentioned both meditating or journaling. Oh, gosh, I would say they all have their place. Meditating mm -hmm. is definitely great for helping me to stay calm throughout the day and collected and all of that. And powerful things can happen in meditation. But I think journaling is very important because especially when you're doing this work, it's hard to tell how far you've come. And so if you're journaling and you feel like you've made no progress, you can always go back and say, hey, I don't really feel like that anymore. So yes, I've made progress. So like it's got to be both. Ooh. Can we do both? Well, yeah, well, I like I like the um, explanation on the journaling there. That's a really good way to look at it. Yeah. And I've heard so many people talk about doing journaling for years and having all of those books because a lot of people do write down because there are benefits to writing in a journal as opposed to doing it digitally or just talking through things in, in your mind. And that they have those books, you know, and you can really look back and see that story. And who knows, maybe there might be a book to come out of your journals and you can share more about your story and expertise on that. So just finally, I just want to ask, what do you think would really help our listeners to help them live healthy now? I would say to take care of yourself because you are the only one who has to live with you for the rest of your life. And it is so much more than just eating healthy or working out. You know, it's your mental health too. And making sure that you're paying attention and listening to your own body because our bodies are always communicating with us. And if you don't listen, it's going to keep telling you the same message over and over. And so just take care of your body, be present. And, um, you know, this is what you're going to have for the rest of your life. 
Yeah. And I promise that I haven't given Ashley any money to say this because I have mentioned this so many times. I talk about exactly this, <laughs> Ashley, yeah, how we really just have to value ourselves because we do only have us for our lives. We're the one constant in our life, aren't we? Our body. So yeah, amen to that. Yeah. So just to let our listeners know, where can they connect with you? How can they find out more about the work you do? And if this is something that resonates with them, you know, to get more inspiration from you going forward. Yes. Yeah, so I am most active on Instagram. It's uh, my name at Ashley underscore Holic. And that's where you can go and see my links. You can subscribe to my podcast that comes out January 3rd. And yeah, that's where you're going to find all of my information. You can learn through reels or my posts or whichever method you prefer. Um, and if this, I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but I am uh, letting my audience kind of help with the interview process of my upcoming guests. I'm letting them participate and submit questions. So hop into my stories and, you know, get your questions answered. Oh, what an opportunity. Yeah, definitely do that. And then is there something that you have to help listeners get started to give those free, you know, tips to really get off the start and block with changing their mindset and habits? Yes, yes. I have a trigger tools guide. So it's inside of my link tree. Um, and that's going to be five tools that you can start using to manage your triggers. It's also going to talk about what triggers are, how they affect you and why it's important to start to manage them. And so that's just a free guide for you to kind of dive in and get started. Yeah. So there you go. There's the first little step that you can take straight away. It's all for free. The link's going to be in the show notes and you know, download it and just give yourself that first little action to get going in the next couple of days. So thanks again, Ashley, for joining. I really enjoyed our chat and I wish you lots of luck with the podcast. And I absolutely love how you're trying to share the message and raise awareness. Yes. Thank you so much for having me.